Hey YouTube, it's Little Rocker Cutie 2005 here, also known as Andre. Once again, I am chilling with Buffy Zena Man, also known as Chris. Yep. And this is going to be a video response to Nerd Girl 20. And we, we saw, well actually I saw a video that she did of her Guilty Pleasure films. And we are going to do one of those ourselves as a video response. So we're going to get started. And I'm going to let Chris talk about his only guilty pleasure in my collection, but it's one I happen to like, too. So, take it away. Yeah, the only other guilty pleasure I really consider guilty is a movie I've been watching since I watched since uh, middle school, just about. And it's now and then. When we were both in middle school when that came out. And it's just basically about these four friends that grew up together and stayed friends together and... It's a plot a movie. It's one of I have to admit it's a guilty pleasure for me too. It is one of my favorites ever since it first came out. I had the VHS for years. Had a I had a massive crush on Christina Ricci. I have to admit I kind of still do, but I think that this is probably one of my favorites with her in it. Yeah, so uh, uh, it's kind of a fun movie. No, like, weird, real, uh, serious plot lines, just about four friends growing up in, like, a, in the 60s? 70s. In the 70s. And they go through these different faces together. Yep. Like, Christina Ricci's taped her boobs. Yeah, because she's growing up in a family with all boys. And when it's in the paranormal, the second... The one wants to be an actress, and the other one wants to be a housewife. They all pretty much got what they wanted. Christina Ricci's character, she becomes a doctor. Of course, she be, she her grown-up character is played by Rosie O'Donnell. Um, then you got Melanie Griffith, uh, Demi Moore, um, Rita Wilson, and then for the younger versions, you have, of course, Christina Ricci. You have Thora Birch as Melanie Griffith's character. Uh, Gabby Hoffman from Volcano as um, Demi Moore's character. Then you have uh, Ashley Aston Moore, who who I've never heard of before this movie, um, as the young Rita Wilson. And I think they all did a pretty good job. I mean, this is like I said, this is a movie that I love. I consider it a guilty pleasure myself. It's just one that since I, since it first came out when I was like eleven or twelve, I've loved it. Yes, and uh, the one thing that always sticks up for me yeah, at the beginning. When Demi Moore's character is driving back to her hometown, she's chain smoking. She says, "This I pick up that we're going to quit," and she dumps out a carton of cigarettes and grabs one. I say she goes through a whole. There's an empty carton, and then she grabs another one. It's like she went through a whole carton in the car. <laughs> Girl, close to it. Okay, so my first guilty pleasure. I guess you could say it's two movies since it's. An original and a sequel, but it is Ralph Bakshi's Fritz the Cat, and then the sequel, The Nine Lives of Fritz the Cat. Now, Fritz the Cat was actually the first X rated cartoon, which is part of the reason I consider it a guilty pleasure because it's probably the most, the dirtiest cartoon I have ever seen, but there is kind of a funny story behind this one. The first time I saw it, I was. I want to say probably about 12 or 13 and this video store here in Holton Lake they had this movie in the comedy section and it said on their rental case rated X and yet they rented this movie to me anyway and when I saw it I was just shocked I mean this is one of those movies that once you see it it's I I don't know like really what to say about it other than I do consider it a guilty pleasure you know it's about it's about this cat. It's based on. It's actually based on a comic strip, but it's about this cat who's an NYU student. It's in the '60s. He's dealing with like hippies, drugs, racism. There's all that kind of stuff going on. And then we have the sequel, which actually wasn't rated X. It was. It was rated R, and they took out a lot of the sexual stuff and made it more political. He's like a therapist to Hitler. Um, he works with Kissinger. Um, I think, yeah, Kissinger became president in this, and so he's an aide to him, um, but
But to do all this, um, he like smokes this, um, I don't know what you call it, like catnip. It's like a hallucinogenic, kind of like weed you would think, but instead they call it catnip instead of weed. So I haven't watched this one. Actually, I haven't watched it yet, but it's one that since I love the first one, I'll probably like this one just as much. I'm just not sure because there's only one review here on YouTube and it was pretty negative, but I'm really looking forward to it. Now, my next guilty pleasure is another Ralph Bakshi film. This was also an X-rated cartoon. It is Heavy Traffic. Now, this one was a mix of live action and animation, which Ralph Bakshi became known for. And it was about this guy who was a comic... He was a, ca a cartoonist. His name's Michael Corleone. Kind of looks like um, Al Pacino's character in the Godfather movies. Named after him, of course, but basically about his life growing up in New York City in the early 70s. It's an interesting movie when you when you look at it. Um, when it first came out, the New York Museum of Modern Art gave it like some really high praise. And I did watch this one after I first got it. It was one that I thought was actually pretty good. I think I agree with a lot of what people say. This is Ralph Bakshi's best film. And this is one that... I don't know, I kind of feel guilty for liking it because of what it is, but it's one that I happen to enjoy. Next one, I have another Ralph Bakshi film. Now, this is Coonskin. This was a very controversial movie when it first came out in, I think, 75. I'm not sure if this was rated X as well, but this DVD of it is rated R, and I think when this first came out, the there was a theater that was showing it that got uh, firebombed or like had smoke. It wasn't firebombed, but it was hit with a bunch of smoke bombs because I guess like there were church groups and like um, African American rights groups that didn't want this movie to come out. And like I said, it was a lot of controversy for controversy's sake. And I, I think this is a really interesting movie. If you do, if you ever like find this anywhere I would highly recommend you pick it up and check it out I have one more Ralph Bakshi film that I consider a guilty pleasure it is American Pop now this is another I guess what you'd call R-rated cartoon because it was aimed at older audiences and they were trying to show the animation wasn't just for kids around like in the 70s and 80s and this one's basically about four generations of the same musical family and their kind of rise in the music world through like the 20s, the 20s and so on. For, and it goes to like the late 70s, I think is where it ends, with the last character who finally becomes, of the family who finally becomes a star. And it's got a lot of great music in it from, let's see, The Doors, Jimi Hendrix, uh, Janis Joplin, Moms and the Papas, Pat Benatar. There's a lot of great music in here. It's And that's another reason I love this movie. is because of all this great music. And it's one that I consider a guilty pleasure. But it's one that, you know, I enjoy it. I don't care what anybody else thinks. It's my opinion. So it's one that I kind of look back on with a smile. And it's one I enjoy. Now, this this next guilty pleasure of mine is a series of four films and I'm going to get knocked for this by a couple people particularly one sitting right here and <laughs> one who I know will be watching this video Shauna Tonin I know you're gonna knock me for this I'll but it, for it is of course Twilight New Moon Eclipse and Breaking Dawn Part 1 now, of course, that makes up the Twilight Saga so far. There's The last one is hitting theaters this month. And, yeah, no, next month, November, as I'm sure all of you know. But I happen to like these movies. Um, I I do agree with Chris that vampires shouldn't sparkle. Oh, uh, hell no. But I like the whole story behind it. You know, I read, I read the books, but I never finished the fourth book, which is probably why I haven't watched Breaking Dawn Part 1 yet. Because I've been waiting for part two to come out. And I don't know why I haven't watched part one yet. But I think there is a reason. Because I had a girlfriend back in February. Well, it's, actually this was back when Breaking Dawn part one first came out. It was going to be our first date. 
but then she passed away in February and I got Breaking Dawn Part 1 probably a couple months later and I was going to have a Twilight Fest in her honor but it's been kind of hard so I guess when I get around to it I'm just going to watch them and enjoy them for what they are. Okay, I read all the books. I tried to read the host. But I ended up throwing that across the room and outside the window. I never touched the host. And I hit a raccoon, I think. <gasps> well, he, he, did up. he went, motherfucker, and ran away. He hit a raccoon with a butt. Cruelty to animals. Hey. He just shoots the up my that crap. <laughs> I, I read all four books. But I got the books on tape for like the second one. Because I didn't feel like reading it. Because I want... Because the way she writes, I don't want to bash my fucking head in. Well, you borrowed the third book from me. I read that in like a week. And when I finished... I had to take many breaks. When I finished reading a chapter, I bashed my head into the book. It's like, get to the damn point, you bitch. <laughs> the fourth book I downloaded to listen to. And the last chapter did not have on that book and tape. So I had to get the book. Read it. I was like, okay, I got this series done. I'll never read it again. Poor, poor Chris. I feel for you. I'm a backhand boy. <laughs> Oh, I do for Sean too. <laughs> it's like, I'll no. get you back! Give me my Harry Potter and I'm happy. Now, I have, I have to agree with you. I happen to like Harry Potter more than Twilight, so that is another guilty pleasure for me, but there's too many movies in the series for me to, to go through them one at a time and just show them all off. But Harry Potter, that is just... I don't know what to say about it. I mean, that is a series I love. Yeah. I got into it in high school and read all the books. Couldn't put them down. I, when I got into it, I, Miss Sarah read the first two books to us. Now I went to the library, got the third one, then the fourth one. And I kept reading over and over again, waiting for the fifth book. I'll say, and we went to every every movie in the theater twice, except for two of them. Right, because one time we, we went with people and they wouldn't shut up. And the last, and the 7.1 was with our friend Terry and her boyfriend in the back room going, Yeah. I just was, I just wanted to grab that popcorn and throw it at them and go, Shut up! Oh, I know how you felt. They, they well, I hate when people whisper for long periods of time. Right. Just when you try to pay attention, like, It's like, I can hear you. Don't and make, people were looking at us like we were the ones causing the trouble. I'm going... Of course, the one old man I want to flip off, but... I know! But I've been afraid of... He, I, did, I kind of felt guilty to have a heart attack in the middle of the movie and I wasn't able to see the second part. I did flip him off. Yeah, yeah. But, moving on. Moving on, I have another guilty pleasure of mine. This is a chick flick, but... This is the one I happen to like. It's Richard Gere and Julia Roberts in Pretty Woman. Now, this is one that I, I saw when I was a kid, and it was one that I just fell in love with. I mean, it's this was the movie that first got me into Julia Roberts, and she's one of my favorite actresses, and I've loved her since this movie. I've seen a lot of the stuff she's done, and a lot of it I really love, but I think this is the one that started it all for me, and this is the one that is my favorite. I, I just remember that one scene. <laughs> oh, with the jewelry case? Yeah. Yeah. First thing, if it was me, I'd be pissed. It's like, don't you fucking tease me. <laughs> Give me a <laughs> <laughs> And last up, I did leave a comment to Nerd Girl telling her about this one. It is Steel Magnolias. Now, this is another one with Julia Roberts, but I think she's only in a smaller part in this one, but I'm not sure if it's a smaller part or if it's a big part, but as far as I know, she dies at the end. And of course, that's the scene that always makes me cry because, like I said, I love Julia Roberts, but this is a movie that's got a lot of good actresses in it. Sally Field, Olympia Dukakis, Dolly Parton, Shirley MacLaine. I mean, you got some good actresses in this movie, and it's one that is just, it's an unbelievable movie. I mean, it makes you laugh, it makes you cry. 
And then it, it goes back to making you laugh again. I mean, what other movie can do that? I, I remember the... I remember watching that first time when I was on vacation in Arkansas. No, yeah, Arkansas. See, my aunt it was on TV. I was like in second grade. And my first question was, during the funeral scene in the cemetery, I was like, why isn't the coffin open? I, I wasn't sure about that myself the first because, time I saw it. Because sometimes you see open coffin. Sarah service was asked that. My said, birds eat here. I'm like, oh, that's a bad thing? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. oh, okay. So I'm just as that. And then after it was like, punch me. Or punch her. <laughs> that's, that's what I remember the first time I saw it. Right. Was that. Oh, well, well, I guess that's all of our guilty pleasures, well, at least out of my collection anyway. And once again, this is Little Rocker Cutie 2005, also known as Andre. I'm chilling with Buffy Zena Man, also known as Chris. We're telling you to enjoy life, have a good time, enjoy some Starburst, and enjoy some Skittles.